Hello? Sorry for the delay. Uh, my name is Philip. I'm a senior programmer at Team Engine. It's SP. Uh, the name of the team is sort of vague, but mostly we're dealing with the graphics engine in EVE called Trinity. And today I wanted to talk to you about our biggest project this year, integration of DirectX 12 into EVE. Uh, I'll tell you what is the progress so far for us, uh, what have we discovered while adding DirectX 12 to the client, uh, about the performance improvements that we've made in the process, and uh, a bit about the future, about our plans. But uh, let's start with uh, some history. Here on the slide you can see the uh, releases of DirectX versions on the right, and on the left are releases of EVE that uh, had upgrades to DirectX. We uh, released EVE in 2003 okay. with DirectX 9 support. Back in the day it was like a fresh new technology. Uh, then a few years later we uh, had the Trinity expansion, which was a fairly big expansion for the graphics engine. We reworked a lot of things there. And we had support for something called DirectX 9C, which was the newest version of DirectX. It's sort of like 9.3 thing. And we're still using that one for the DirectX 9 client up until today. Uh, we skipped DirectX 10 entirely and uh, added DirectX 11 in Rubicon expansion uh, five years ago, eight, six, six. Uh, and since then, we had these two clients running DirectX 9 and DirectX 11. Hopefully, next year, we will release DirectX 12 client. So what were the reasons for us to start upgrading DirectX? Uh, first and most important one is the uh, promise of performance in DirectX 12. Uh, if we do it right, we'll get better performance for a DirectX 12 client. Uh, it has uh, some features that will really help us along the way, something called async compute that would allow us to run some of the uh, things on GPU in parallel with the main graphics rendering. It also gives us a reason to go back and uh, change the architecture of Trinity rendering engine to make it more performant and more modern. One of the really big things in there is the multi-threaded rendering. We're going to stop start working on this one really soon. I will talk more about rendering and multi-threading in a few minutes. And of course, there are a few eye candy features in DirectX 12. You probably heard about ray tracing. Uh, there is also like less hyped feature called mesh shaders, which we're also very interested in. We just started looking into these guys, so I have no information about them today. Hopefully next year I will be able to tell more. So what were the uh, steps into adding a new API to Trinity? Uh, even though we announced the project just last Vegas, we have been preparing for this for a long time. We were uh, trimming the dependencies in uh, EVE. Unfortunately, one of them was Captain's Quarters. <laughs> we're also adding 64-bit support. It is almost a prerequisite for DirectX 12. We also... Uh, we were also adding uh, new uh, and upgrading uh, the uh, C++ compiler that we use. Again, that's an important step for us, and uh, it's also a prerequisite for DirectX 12. Uh, and uh, this winter, we have started the actual work for adding the new version of DirectX. Uh, we started by just creating some really naive stupid implementation of DirectX 12 into the engine. Then we were fixing bugs. We were improving performance of what we had. Then we were fixing bugs, and we were improving performance. 
and we have been in this loop for quite a while now. But at this moment, we're almost ready to have internal tests in the company where we allow other people in the office to try out DirectX 12 client. Uh, after that, we'll fix more bugs, and eventually it will get to CC. In terms of components, uh, there are three important parts to integrate in new version of rendering API. The first part is called Trinity IL. It's a very small library that we have in the engine, and that allows us to abstract different versions of uh, graphics API. The other important part is the graphics tests. These are like small tests that uh, check that Trinity IL library is behaving the way it should. <laughs> and there is also something called Eve Probe. It's a standalone graphics application that uses Trinity Engine and can render space scenes, but it's not tied to the client. It is super important for optimizations and for testing out the engine. So let's start with Trinity L. Uh, when we were adding support for DirectX 11, we had this problem that if client would talk directly to DirectX 9 from all over the place. So we had an option of like adding if statements all over the place. If it is DirectX 9, then do this. If it's DirectX 11, then do that. And add it in a few thousand places all across the code. But instead, we uh, added a small library, which is called Trinity IL. It's a very low level and tiny library that allows us to abstract away the rendering API that we are actually using. And it had two backend implementations, one for DirectX 9 and one for DirectX 11. And the rest of the EVE client would talk only to the Trinity IL and never directly to the graphics API. Of course, we had some fun with it throughout the years. We've added a lot of different backends to it. Most of them were like stillborn babies, so none of them were actually finished except for one, the important one, is the stub. We totally finished this one. It is the backend that doesn't have any graphics API attached to it, so you basically have Eve without any rendering. It's pretty useless to people, but it's uh, very useful for running any automated tests on the client. And we use this continuously to test, for example, that the client can start up or for some uh, gameplay tests. Also, interestingly, the uh, GLES2 implementation uh, found some afterlife in uh, WebGL experiments that we were doing. <laughs> so all we needed in theory is to just add another backend for DirectX 12. And uh, that we did. Uh, we added all the features that we currently use for DirectX 11, uh, and it was working just fine. We started also to improve the library itself, the public part of it, that is connected to the rest of the Eve, and we're slowly migrating it uh, from looking something like DirectX 9 to something that looks like DirectX 11 and now to something that more looks like DirectX 12. <coughs> Another important part are graphics tests. Uh, we have this pretty large library sorry, of uh, tests that uh, check that this Trinity L library is doing what it's supposed to be doing. We have uh, hundreds of un so-called unit tests. These are like tiny tests that checks that each function in the library is uh, returning the results that are, we are expecting it to return. And we also have dozens of integration tests. These are a bit more complex. They actually do some rendering so that we can check that the rendering is working correctly. And these tests look like this. It, it is not pretty, and uh, it's programmer art at its best. But all of them are very important. Uh, I will go through a few of them. 
For example, this one. Uh, it's like a very basic and very important test that it checks that we can render a triangle. Uh, if we can render one triangle, then we can render 10 or 100 or 1,000 or an entire ship. So if this one works, then we're pretty confident that we can render a ship, for example. Uh, this one is more involved. Uh, this test checks that we can render a triangle into an image and then use it as a texture to render a quad. And that is pretty much how the uh, post-processing works in EVE. Again, a triangle, but a very different one. Uh, here we check that we can stream the data from CPU into GPU to render triangles on the fly. And that is the backbone of all the EVE UI rendering. So after we were done with tests, uh, it only took us about two days to get uh, EVE client up and working with DirectX 12. We could get to the login screen, and in a few more days of fixing bugs, we could get into space and fly around. We were done. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, not really, we had tons of bugs. Uh, even though we could get into space, but the uh, life of the client was just a few minutes. Eventually, something would break and something will die. We had lots of rendering bugs, crashes, uh, driver removed things, blue screens even sometimes. So we started this phase of fixing bugs. That was probably the most depressing part of the whole work. It took us probably a couple of months to fix most of the bugs. But the good thing about it is that some of the fixes also apply to DirectX 11. We just never really noticed these bugs before, but they sort of popped out with DirectX 12. So for one example of that, is a really nasty bug that took us roughly three weeks to fix. Uh, it was manifesting as a uh, driver remove thing when the screen goes black for a second, uh, and then the client crashes. Uh, it always happened when we were just entering the space, like logging in or undocking or something. And uh, the prerequisite was that we needed to have a few more ships in the scene for it to happen. Uh, after lots of tests, we uh, narrowed it down to the feature called dynamic lighting. Uh, that is uh, the feature that allows artists to place like lots of small lights around the scene for <coughs> explosions or something like that. Uh, but it turned out that there was another component in this thing. Uh, it's called imposters. It was also important for this bug to appear. The imposter is a optimization technique that we use. When the ships are really small on the screen, we stop rendering them as 3D objects, but rather use 2D images instead. And uh, for us to have this image, we need to first render the ship into this tiny little texture that we can use then to render these 2D images. Turned out that we were rendering these images too early when the uh, dynamic lighting was not fully initialized. So in the end, we were using garbage values in the buffers, and that resulted in the uh, driver removal. We fixed that, and uh, it will be shipped with the next update in even November. And for example, this bug is totally reproducible in DirectX 11. It's just harder to reproduce. So after two months of work, we went from really like large amount of bugs in the client to almost zero. That is almost zero DirectX 12 bugs and the ones that we could find. I'm pretty sure there are more. We just haven't seen them yet. By now, like uh, running DirectX 12 client feels like just like running a client. There's nothing special about it compared to 
when we initially started looking into the Red Hat 12 client, it felt like a minefield. Uh, after we were mostly done with bugs, we started finally looking into performance. DirectX 12 promises better performance, but we really need to work towards that. Uh, part of the reason it, it is better is uh, in how it abstracts the hardware API. Uh, back with uh, DirectX 11, the API for DirectX was uh, very abstract. And then it was the driver's job to translate this abstract graphics commands into hardware commands. And that was a lot of work for the driver. With DirectX 12, the uh, <coughs> API is, uh, looks more like what the hardware is actually doing. So the driver part is much smaller. But that means we need to get a bit more low level in the EVE client itself. We have started with a client that was way slower than the DirectX 11 client. Uh, first thing we needed to do is fix our implementation for DirectX 12. As I said earlier, it was very naive, just a rough thing to get going. And at that point, we even got some help from our London office. <coughs> the programmers there really helped us to get that part out of the way. Once that was done, we started looking into what we can do to make it better. And uh, here's probably the best part of DirectX 12 for us is that there are new profiling tools that come with it. The ones from AMD or NVIDIA or Microsoft are really good. They allow us to see what are the problems exactly and allow us to validate that our optimizations are actually helping, not hurting. Also, at this point, if probe application was really important for us. It allows us to save the uh, space scene with ships and everything, and uh, then rerun it exactly the same as before. So we can run the same scene multiple times and check that our performance are actually improving things. Based on all of this data, we made the first batch of optimizations. It involved a lot of things. Most of them were really small optimizations, but the sum of them was significant enough. Uh, it allowed us to get closer to DirectX 11 performance. And also, most of these optimizations actually affect DirectX 11 as well. So you should expect somewhat better performance, especially in the larger scenes. With, and uh, these, uh, most of these optimizations will be released in November, just for DirectX 11. I want to show you a couple of examples of optimizations that we need made. These are the ones that affect uh, GPU performance. The first one is has to do with dynamic reflections. It's a fairly new feature that we added. Uh, it uh, allows you to see the reflections of planets and suns on ships. The way it works is we uh, render <coughs> six images around the player ship, combine this into a virtual cube, and then uh, blur that and use that as a to drive the reflections on the surface of the ship. Here is the output of the uh, profile for the part of the frame where we render and blur the uh, images for the reflections. This is the GPU work that is going on there. On the horizontal axis is the timing frame, and those vertical bars they uh, sort of rep represent how busy the GPU is. You can see those blue spikes. That's where we uh, render each of those six faces of the virtual cube. And there is also some copying <coughs> involved. So there are more than six spikes in there. But the important part is the uh, space between them. The empty space is where the GPU is not doing much work at all. This happens uh, 
because we had some uh, data dependencies between phases. So the GPU can, can't start the rendering the new phase before it finishes with the other one. We fixed that, and here's the same result. So the time scale is the same, but uh, the uh, rendering of the uh, cube for reflection is roughly 60% faster. Another example is with dynamic lighting. Again, it's this system that allows artists to place small lights in the scene. We can have multiple lights, hundreds and even thousands. We use a so-called forward plus algorithm for that. And uh, the, in the heart of this algorithm is uh, something called tiles. We divide the screen into small rectangles and for each rectangle, we need to record the, all the lights that can potentially affect things inside of that rectangle. <coughs> Turned out that this process is not really fast enough, so let's take a look. Here is the uh, hangar scene in the probe, and hangars are really bad at lighting. We have lots of really large lights in that, and the performance was not so good for it. Here's the visualization of those tiles, and uh, the colors here represent the number of lights in each tile. You can see it going from blue to green to yellow. Yellow is pretty bad already. And uh, here is again the uh, snapshot of the profile for that scene. The yellow rectangle there is where we uh, calculate those light lists for tiles. And the uh, part to the right is where we render the geometry for uh, the hangar. We started optimizing this yellow part to make those bars higher so that we can do more work at the same time. And while doing it, we also uncovered a couple of really nasty bugs in the algorithm. And turned out that we were recording too many lights per each tile, and that resulted in a worse than needed performance for rendering the geometry itself. <laughs> After the uh, optimization, this is the result. So we get faster lighting and also faster rendering for the hangar for the geometry. And here's the visualization. It's absolutely the same scene. Visually nothing changes. But you can see that the number of lights in each tile is way less than before. So overall, we started with really shitty performance for DirectX 12. Uh, now we are on par with DirectX 11. So sometimes DirectX 12 client is faster. Sometimes it's slower, but not by much. And we also managed to significantly improve DirectX 11 performance in some cases. Still, it's not good enough for us. So we are continuing with more optimizations. One important one is the async compute. It's the new feature in DirectX 12. It will allow us to run some of the work that we normally do uh, in sequence with the uh, other rendering we will be able to run it in parallel. So a couple of things that we want to look into are those reflection blurring things and also GPU particle updates. On the CPU side, the exciting part for us is the multi-threaded rendering. When you look at any application that uses GPU, you can th sort of think of it as running on two processors, CPU and GPU. And uh, eventually, they need to sync up. So once per frame, they kinda one of them will have to wait for the other to complete all the work. And depending on which one waits, uh, the application is either called CPU limited or GPU limited. So for example, if uh, application is CPU limited, that means that at the point of sync up, 
the GPU is going to be waiting for the CPU to complete all the work. And it also means that it doesn't make much sense of optimizing any GPU work because you're not going to affect the frame rate at all. Eve is kind of both. It really depends on the scene there. So for smaller scenes like hangar or dungeons, it is usually GPU limited. But for large scenes like fleet fights, it is heavily CPU limited. So anything we can do to improve CPU performance will really affect the uh, performance of fleet fights. And uh, one of those large things that we can do is multi-threaded rendering. Here is the scene in the client. It's called Death Cube. We usually use it to test the performance of the client. It's a thousand ships arranged in a cube. It's no fleet fight at all, but it's close enough for us usually to test the performance of ship rendering. And uh, this is the capture of uh, CPU profiling for this frame. Uh, if you look at it, you'll see that most of the frame is consumed by Trinity work. And also that there are two parts to this work. The state update where we update all the animations, all the positions of the ship, we drive all our special effects and everything. And then there is the rendering part where we submit all the work to GPU to, to render things. Now, with uh, multi-threaded rendering, we can move this rendering part to happen in parallel with the state update. So you would get something like that. This would allow us to significantly improve performance for the client. But it's a lot of work to get there. Uh, for all these years that EVE exists, it has been primarily a single-threaded application. And uh, it is really hard to add more threads to it because there are lots of assumptions that it has only a single thread. But we will start working on it pretty soon and hopefully next year you will see this thing out. Uh, it would be improper to not mention DirectX 9. Uh, we will be removing it. Uh, obviously, we will have some grace period before we do this, and we will notify everyone ahead of time. We're also working on the Mac so that we're not leaving it behind or something. We are investigating DirectX 11 on the Mac. If anyone uses DirectX 9 client but actually can run DirectX 11, please try again. Uh, and if you have any problems with it, just submit new bug reports. We will be looking at this very seriously. Uh, but removing DirectX 9 for us is uh, actually very exciting, almost as ex exciting as it in DirectX 12. Uh, when we only introduced DirectX 11, we were on feature parity with DirectX 9. But throughout the years, we have accumulated a fairly large backlog of things that we would like to do with rendering, but we can't because we need to support DirectX 9. After removing DirectX 9, we have a green light for a few projects. And I want to show you just a couple of them. First one is Shadows. Shadows that we have came, I think, in Trinity expansion. So the implementation is fairly old. It's one of the oldest features that has, been, has not been touched since then. The implementation takes a few of the uh, largest objects on the screen and renders uh, shadows for them. So no matter how many ships you have in the scene, you would only get just a few of them with shadows. The rest will be without shadows. Uh, this results in very ugly shadow popping when uh, the set of ships that get the shadows changes. Uh, 
you can see them switching shadows back and forth. That looks really disturbing. Uh, another problem is that uh, these shadow maps that we use for the objects, they have a fairly low resolution. And it worked well before we had ships, not much else. But now we're adding larger and larger objects, like citadels. And it starts to really break up the you know, screenshot. You can see uh, shadows from a couple of ships on the citadels. And they don't look well. Also, shadows are really slow. Here is again a screenshot of a profiler for those thousand ships scenes. And you can see that part where we render ships without shadows. That would be 984 ships. And then the uh, 16 lucky ones with shadows. Uh, what you can see, sort of, here is that that thing with 16 shadows uh, has lots of gaps. It's the same story as with the uh, reflection. Even though it looks like GPU is doing a lot of work in that part, it really isn't. It's mostly idle. We, in theory, we could have fixed it, but we don't really want to. We want to change the algorithm rather than try to like apply band-aids to it. Over the years, we have been trying a few other approaches to shadows. Uh, we always wanted to have like full scene shadows. That means like all the ships have shadows rather than just a few. Uh, we've been trying the more or less industry standard methods like called cascaded shadow maps and its variants. Uh, most of them just don't work with Eve. Eve is sort of special because the scenes are enormous. You can have uh, your ship as close to the camera as a few hundred meters and still see a station that is hundreds of kilometers away. That uh, creates problems for normal existing algorithms for shadows. Also, there is a lot of empty space in EVE. And that means that all those uh, classic algorithms for shadows, they will waste a lot of shadow map space for just empty space. One really promising algorithm we were looking at is called virtual shadow maps. It's sort of like a mega texture for shadows. The algorithm itself is very complex, but uh, it is really well fitted for Eve because it deals with those empty places and it can deal with really huge scenes at the same time. We can uh, get pixel perfect shadow maps with that one. But the downside is that we can't implement it in the DirectX 9. Another example is uh, textures. Here's a screenshot of a ship from the client. Uh, this projector doesn't make it justice, but it's still pretty. Here's the one that the artist author. Uh, again, projector sucks, but believe me, this one is way better than the one that, that is in client. <laughs> Uh, so what happens in between uh, the ship that, authored, that is authored by artists and uh, the one that you see in the client? The degradation mostly comes from textures. Uh, we are using uh, something called texture packing, texture compression, and we also resize the textures in the process. And all of that degrades the uh, quality of the textures. Uh, Texture packing is the process where we take all of those textures that uh, artists author for the ship and we pack them in just a few textures. So we go from eight textures, the uh, artist authors, to three textures. 
We do this because uh, most of those textures, the source textures, are grayscale, so we can put them into different channels of the uh, same texture. The process itself is uh, harmless, but after we do the packing, we do the compression, and that really fucks up the quality. Uh, normally, the compression is pretty good. If you, for example, take a photograph and use the compression that we have on it, you won't see much of a difference. But uh, we are compressing the stuff that is not a color, and those uh, things in different color channels are unrelated. And that creates really big problems for the compression. With DirectX 11, we get quite a few new compression uh, formats that we can use. And those will provide way better quality for textures. Here's an example of a normal map compression. So this is what you see in the client. It's just a part of the ship with all the textures removed, but the normal map. This is what artists author. And this is the new compression for that comes with DirectX 11. Again, for comparison, this is the uh, uh, one in the client right now. Uh, another thing is the texture sizes. Uh, in order to not blow up GPU memory, we use something called texture loading. So when the ship is really large on the screen, we use full resolution textures that come in the client. But when it gets really small, we switch to smaller versions of this texture, one eighth of the uh, height. This is really good, it allows us to save a lot of memory, but we can do better than that. What if instead of just having these three variants of the texture, we have all of them, kind of like this. This would allow us to save even more memory because we can switch to like lower resolution textures way faster. We did some tests with this, and uh, turns out that we would be using way less me GPU memory if we switch to this scheme with our current texture setup. But it also, if we allow high resolution textures, something we have promised for years, we would stay in the same ballpark of the GPU memory. So just by using this algorithm, we can sort of get the high resolution textures for free. Except it's not completely for free. We would uh, have to use more disk access to get those textures in. We would be working on that. And we'd also need uh, some cache in the RAM so that we don't abuse the uh, disk too much. And here, the 64-bit client really helps, because then we can allocate a few hundred megabytes of RAM for the texture cache. So in conclusion, uh, DirectX 12 project is coming along. We have done a lot, but we still have a few things to do before we ship. Uh, we also started looking into other projects that sort of relate to DirectX 12, like multi-threaded rendering, uh, and we really hope to get those shadows and textures fixed soon. Don't think we have any time for questions, but tomorrow there is a round table. Please join. It's at 11 somewhere. <laughs> Thank you.